Hi, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Andrew, and I just wanted to share with you a few reflections that have helped keep me grounded and focused on God. Um, I was going to say in the last few weeks, but actually in the last year or so, if I'm honest. So one of my favourite verses in the whole Bible that I think teaches us something beautiful and fundamental about the character of Jesus is in Matthew chapter 9, and it's verse 36. And it says, When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. And I love this, because it tells us that Jesus wasn't just wandering around healing and preaching for a bit of fun, or because he thought he was right and everyone else was wrong and he needed us to know. Or it wasn't just because God was a bit cranky that we'd made such a mess of things. And so one day he said to Jesus, well, you don't have a job. You go down there and sort it out. Actually, this verse says that in his whole ministry, Jesus was motivated and compelled by compassion. The verse says Jesus saw the crowds. And I want to really, really encourage you that I think there's some real weight there, that he saw them. He didn't just see them as any passing man might have thought, oh, there's a crowd over there. But he noticed them. He paused and took the time to really see them, their hearts and their lives and their experiences. So often when we meet someone who's significant to us, isn't it because it felt like they could actually see us when so many people couldn't? Jesus saw the crowds. And when he did, he saw that for so many of us, life isn't easy. We feel helpless at times. We feel harassed in the melee and the uncertainty of life. Being human can be hard. And Jesus saw that and so was moved by compassion to act. And the word for compassion here, the original Greek word that I'm going to really embarrass myself now by trying to pronounce, it's proud to pronounce, is splashnomai which I've definitely just said wrong. Um, but it comes for it comes from the word for bowels and innards. It's actually where our modern word spleen comes from, because splashnomai is a compassion so deep that it feels as if your very innards are being torn open. It's when you share in the hardship of another so deeply that you can't not act on that compassion. Splash Nomai was the fuel for Jesus's ministry. It's what compelled his life. It's what ultimately led him to Calvary in love to suffer and die so that we might be set free. And as Jesus's disciples and followers, it's that compassion that we're invited to share in and to experience and to be shaped and motivated by whenever we pray for the sick, whenever we feed the poor, whenever we seek to follow him. And Jesus said, if we follow him to the ultimate end, we too might be so moved by this compassion that we'll take up our crosses too. And God's compassion can be uncomfortable. It can be hard sometimes to love someone when they're going through pain or loss or addiction. And compassion can lead us to go to costly places. We see this in John's Gospel when Jesus' friend Mary has lost her brother and she's so grief-stricken and angry at God and without hope or even faith it seems and Jesus comes alongside her in that place and weeps with her. He allows himself to feel that hopelessness and pain so that she need not be alone in that place. At a time like this, when we're in the midst of a global pandemic, it can be so easy to be overwhelmed when, whenever we turn on the news or open our Facebook feed, there are just so many instances of hardship and uncertainty and difficulty, and it can be easy to be numbed by the sheer volume of it all, for it all to just become white noise. I felt that. But I want to just encourage you today to take time in your week to pause. To see, like Jesus saw, those around you in your communities and your families that are struggling. And I just want to encourage you 
to come alongside them in that place. It might be as simple as a WhatsApp message or the quick phone call, but in my experience, when we allow ourselves to see the other, to really see them, to be moved by God's compassion and to come alongside them, there's a deep and beautiful feeling of connection, of intimacy, and ultimately of nearness to Christ because it's his compassion we're feeling. And when we do that, we let go for a moment of our own struggles and fears. And we know something of the joy for which Jesus endured the cross, the joy of God's compassion. And if you're not in a place to do that, if you're feeling a bit like Mary and you just can't see past the pain and the uncertainty of your situation, that's okay. I want to encourage you that God sees you. He sees you and he has compassion. And maybe you could do something even braver and more remarkable. Maybe you could share a bit of that vulnerability with your friends, with your family, with your church and allow them the gift of coming alongside you and sharing in this with you. Thank you for your time.